flying confidence within the aircraft's performance envelope implies a knowledge of the aircraft's performance outside the envelope. Before going solo, you must be able to recognise and recover from out-of-control situations, such as the stall and the spin. Your training is designed to ensure that these situations never occur unexpectedly at low level. You must know how to recognise and avoid unintentional stalls and spins. The practice stall is entered from level flight. Complete the pre-manoeuvre checks and conduct a wing over to provide a lookout and to reduce speed. Scan the ASI throughout the wing over. Aim to roll out to the 130 knot attitude at 130 knots with the PCL at idle. All clear, right, front, above, left, wing over left. Use the rate of PCL reduction to achieve 130 knots wings level. PCL idle. Holding out 130. During the approach to the stall, note the rate of airspeed reduction and the attitude changes required to stay level. Outside the circuit above 2000, cancel number one. 110, stop trimming. 8,000 foot. There are five symptoms that warn of the approaching stall. High nose attitude. Low and reducing airspeed. Sloppy controls. Angle of attack warning and buffet. At the point of stall there will be a slight nose drop, a possible wing drop and the aircraft will develop a rate of descent. The standard stall recovery should be commenced immediately, lowering the attitude sufficiently to unstall the wings, applying MCP and using rudder to prevent further yaw. The power increase will result in left yaw and pitch up. So as the power kicks in, use forward stick and right rudder to remain balanced. Run the trims forward and right at the same time. And do not use aileron to pick up a wing until the wings are unstalled. Here's how it will look to you. There's the stall. Attitude. Raise the nose on the buffet to the climb attitude. 6,000 feet. Positive rate right of climb on both. Brakes on off. Only gear up. Flap up. Air brake in. Lights are out. Flap up. Air brake in. By 150 knots. Let's follow the stall through again in real time. There's the stall. Attitude. Ah. Uh, Bladder. Raise the nose on the buffet. 6,000 feet. Positive rate of climb on both. Brakes on off. Only gear up. Flap up. Air brake in. Lights are out. Flap up. Air brake in. By 150 knots. If you experience a wing drop, remember the control column moves in an L shape so that the wings are unstalled before you level them. Now that you've seen the full stall recovery, it's important to realise that the aim of these sequences is to recognise and avoid the stall. Incipient stalls practice recognition and recovery from the pre-stall condition. The incipient stall recovery is initiated at the angle of attack warning or buffet, whichever occurs first. Maintain the attitude and apply MCP without allowing the aircraft to stall. There should be little or no height loss. There's the beeper. Ah. 
If the stall is mishandled and one wing stalls before the other, the aircraft may auto-rotate. Spin training is vital for recognition and recovery from this situation. The spin is commenced from a high altitude. So while climbing, carry out the pre-manoeuvre checks, remembering the asymmetric fuel check and the spin brief. Flight will be sufficiently recovered by 6,000 AGL. Out here that's 7,000 indicated. Equipment is all secure in the front. The rear. Fuel asymmetry is within a quarter tank. Spin brief. It will be a fully developed direct spin to the left. I will recover after three full turns or passing 9,000 foot. If I find myself out of control below 7,000 indicated, I will eject. Other considerations, I'm within gliding distance of piers and Jinjin, and I'm not over a built up area. As with the stall, carry out a minimum of one wing over to reduce airspeed and to provide a lookout. Left. Roll out at 130 knots with the PCL at idle and the attitude slightly higher than that used for the pre-stall wing over. All clear left and below. This is your Holding out 130. Outside the circuit above 2000, cancel number one. 110, stop trimming. At 80 knots, apply full pro-spin controls. Two hands may be required on the control column. Note the rate of control input. The aircraft will enter the incipient phase. Recovery at this stage is rapid. Feel with your left hand to confirm the throttle is closed and ensure that your knees are level and locked on either side of the control column. Visually confirm the elevator central position by checking that your fist covers the ECS outlet. If the spin stabilises, the nose will quickly drop to 70 degrees nose down. Keep your head up and scan the horizon for a feature to assist in counting the turns. Occasionally look inside of the altimeter. Note the rate of rotation and the attitude. One turn. Two turns. Two turns recovering. The spin recovery begins with confirming by feel that the throttle is closed and the ailerons are neutral. Two turns recovering. PCL aileron. Turn needle left. Full right rudder. Centralise. Scan the turn needle to determine the spin direction. Don't rush. Even though you may have strong sensory cues about spin direction, you must develop the habit of religiously looking for and interpreting the turn needle. When sure of the spin direction, apply full opposite rudder and move the control column forward to the elevator central position. As soon as the spin stops, Centralise the rudder and carry out a nose-low UA recovery. Use about 4G. Slowly apply power as the nose comes up to the horizon. All cartier to NG. Positive rate of climb on both. Brakes on off. Clear up. Shut up. Air brake in. Lights are out, the flaps up, air brake in by 150 knots. We haven't oversped anything, we haven't overstressed. Orientation, we're heading northeast, still on the northern. Safety altitude not broken. Now let's look at the spin again in real time. A full drop spin. Three manoeuvre checks. Height will be sufficiently recovered by 6,000 AGL. Out here that's 7,000 indicated. Equipment is all secure in the front. Rear. Fuel asymmetry is within a quarter tank. Spin brief. It will be a fully developed direct spin to the left. I will recover after three full turns or passing 9,000 foot. If I 
I find myself out of control below 7,000 indicated, I will eject. Other considerations, I'm within gliding distance of Pierce and Jinjin, and I'm not over a built-up area. All clear, right. Front. Above. Left. Wing over left. All clear left and below. You see a lot of Coming out 130. Outside the circuit above 2000. And so another one. 110, stop trimming. 13,200. 80 knots, low spin, up. Nose jump. One turn. Two turns. Three turns recovering. PCL aileron. Turn needle left, full right rudder. Centralize. Three G, nine thousand foot. Four uh, Kati to NG. Was a road to climb on both. Brakes on off. You're up, five up, air brake in. Lights are out, the flaps up, air brake in by one fifty knots. We haven't oversped anything, we haven't overstressed. Orientation, we're heading northeast, still on the northern. Take the altitude, not bad. Remember, the aim of these training sequences is to recognise and avoid unintentional stalls and spins. Let's recap the symptoms of a stall. One, low and reducing airspeed. Two, high nose attitude. Three, sloppy controls. 4. Angle of attack warning and 5. The buffet. The spin, although distinctive, can be very disorientating. The main symptom characterising autorotation is abnormal response to control inputs. In order to become an effective pilot, you must practice these recovery actions until they become instinctive.